Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. Glad you're here with me. Today I'm going to be putting on Laticrete Hydroban liquid waterproofing membrane onto my shower mock up that I have built here. You can see I have my Flow Effects drain installed. I have a beautiful, hard, smooth dry pack mortar bed down. And if you want to see how I got the Flow Effects drain in and the mortar bed, I have a couple great videos that I made that you want to check out, especially if you're a beginner or a DIY. I'm going to put the link to that video down in the description so you can watch those videos after this one. But today, I'm going to be putting on the liquid hydroban. I also have my perma base up, and I use two inch alkali resistant mesh tape per the perma base instructions. Perma base is similar to Duroc, it's 100% cement board. So I have the seams thin setted with mesh tape in them. I let this cure 24 hours and it's ready to go for the liquid hydroban. So the important thing if you're using liquid hydroban is that you let the mortar cure before you put the liquid hydroban on. The mortar beds, I would give them at least three days to cure out. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is get my hydroban onto my surface. And the thing with the liquid hydroban is it's gonna take two coats. So I'm just going to get my material onto the surface. So I have a couple tools here. I got my little weenie roller here with a 3 8 snap roller and I have a 3 inch uh, paintbrush. I like the 3 inch. A nice wide paintbrush is going to be really helpful for this. I could probably do this whole area with the paintbrush, but I wanted to show you both. Basically the roller is good for large areas like the walls and the floor and then the brush is really good for getting into the corners. So the nice thing about Hydroban is that you don't need to use any kind of reinforcing fabric at the floor wall transition or really anywhere. Uh, you basically just need to treat your wall board per the manufacturer instructions and then just paint on the Hydroban. And the nice thing, one of the nice things about this is that this is a lot easier for a do-it-yourselfer to do. Most of you guys out there can paint. You know, when you're using sheet membranes, we use a lot of sheet membranes. It's, it's a lot more difficult to install. And it's, it's like hanging wallpaper and you get bubbles and creases. So that's why I'm trying to make these videos to make it easier for you to get a quality, 100% waterproof installation for your tile. So you can see I'm going over the flow effects bonding flange here and just being pretty liberal with it at first. Getting a good first coat. Hydroban is, in my opinion, the best one to use. It's better than Red Guard. It's better than Mape Aqua Defense. It's a little more expensive, but it's definitely worth it. So I got plenty on here. You don't want to go too thick with your first coat. You want to do it in, in two nice even coats. So I'm just being careful to get it everywhere I need it. When the, you can see when the, the hydroban is wet, it's an olive green color. It's, a, it's just an, a lighter color. As it dries, it'll dry a, a deeper, darker kind of sage green. So it's really a nice indicator. You can really tell when it's, when it's dry. So I'm making sure I'm getting all the corners really good to start out with. Let me know you, what you think of my new uh, Tile Coach gloves. You can find these on tilecoach.com. Uh, I have large and extra large. They're just nice utility work gloves. Um, I really appreciate your support when you guys go to tilecoach.com. It helps me make these videos because, as most of you are aware, I am not sponsored by these manufacturers that I use. I bought this Hydroban with my own money uh, so I can give an unbiased review on it. And that's my honest opinion, is that Hydroban is the best liquid waterproofing. And you can be confident that I'm saying that 
because I really believe it. I am not getting paid by them. So now that I got most of the corners and everything done, I'm gonna switch over to the roller just to give you an example. So again, the roller is really nice for, for the, the larger flat areas where a brush doesn't really work as well. Uh, but you can use both. Both are gonna give you a nice even coat and that's what's important. Go up my wall here. Get this wall nice even coat. Making sure you're filling in all of the little holes, little pinholes that might pop up on your, your wall board and your mortar bed. And get this side too. So I've pretty much got my first coat done. It's looking really nice. I'm going to go back over with the brush on the areas that need it, need a little more detail, like around the drain. I want to make sure I got a really good coat between the bonding flange and the mortar bed. And then just take care of all my corners so I don't get too much buildup. You don't want, you don't want the hydro band to be too thick, you want a nice even coat. You don't want it to be gooped up too thick in any area. So <clears throat> I'll take care of all my inside corners and outside corners, <clears throat> making sure I didn't get too much hydro band built up. <clears throat> Okay, so there's my first coat. You can see it went on really quickly. I don't know how long that took, but it was probably about 10 minutes or so. This went on really nice. So I'm gonna let this second coat dry, and it's actually already starting to dry on the more porous surfaces like the perma base and the mortar bed and the thin setted areas. It's already starting to turn the darker color but it will take a little bit longer like around the bonding flange because it's not porous and in the corners so you want to make sure you let the entire unit dry before you put that second coat on there so i'm going to go ahead and take a little break and let this first coat dry and then apply our final coat Okay, so here's a little pro tip while you're waiting for your first coat to dry. You don't need to clean off your brush and your roller, even though it does clean up with water. Um, I use a bag and I'll just put the brush into the bag and seal it up so that you get, get as much of the air out as you can. And that way you don't have to rinse off your brush and it won't harden up because it's basically like putting the lid back on your hydro band. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I'll do it with my roller as well. Plastic bag or a scrap piece of plastic sheeting and you just squeeze out the air and that'll save you some time cleaning tools. Okay, so the first coat is set up really well. In my experience, it takes about three to four hours for the first coat to dry. The second coat will dry a little bit faster, but the first coat, yeah, it's about three to four hours and it really depends on the temperature and humidity. But you'll know for sure when the first coat is dried, you will see it definitely turns a darker olive green color. And so now it's ready for the second coat. You'll see here that I can still see the old thin set patches and actually some writing on the perma base. After you do your second coat, you do not want to see differentiation 
basically you don't want to see anything underneath it. That means you're not thick enough. You don't want to see the writing on the board at all after the second coat. If you'll notice that my roller actually isn't spinning, which is okay, it, you're gonna leave more material on if your roller's not spinning. If you're basically using it like a big paintbrush, it's gonna leave more material on there than if, if you roll it. If you roll it, it's gonna take off more material and not leave as much on the surface. So I actually like to use it almost like a big paintbrush. It leaves more material on there. Now I'm going to take my paintbrush and then same thing that I did last time. I'm just going to make sure that I don't have too much material building up in the corners. Again, that's not a good thing. Too much material is, is actually a bad thing. And I think the paintbrush gives a little bit better coverage, a little more even coverage. So in these critical areas like the shower pan, I recommend going over everything with the paintbrush, kind of just like this, and it's going to even out. It's going to even everything out from the nap on the the paint roller. So I'm using my brush here to just give a really nice, consistent coat.